Welcome fellow seekers of the mysterious. Today, we're embarking on a journey into the unknown, exploring a creature that has piqued my curiosity, the Agagwe. Now, just a heads up, I'm diving into this world of cryptids with fresh eyes, eager to learn and share what I've discovered so far. We're kicking off this series with a look at bipedal ape-like cryptids, and the Agagwe is our fascinating starting point. But fear not, this is just the beginning, and our exploration will span a diverse range of cryptids. My knowledge in this realm is still in its infancy, and I'm learning as I go. The Agagwe has been on my radar, and I can't wait to share what I've discovered so far. But hey, I'm here to learn from you as well. If you've got insights, stories, or just want to join the conversation, feel free to drop a comment. I'm all ears. So let's dive into what I've uncovered about the Agagwe. These tiny, potentially vicious humanoids have left a mark on big game hunters and cryptozoologists with tales that stretch from Tanzania to Zimbabwe and the Ivory Coast. It's fascinating to think about the cultural impact these beings might have in different regions. Captain William Hitchens, a lion hunter, chronicled his encounter with the Agagwe in early 1900s. Picture this, a forest glade waiting for a man-eater when he spots two small furry creatures. Now I can imagine the skepticism he faced when sharing this tale, and that's something I find intriguing. According to Hitchens, these creatures were like little men, about four feet high, walking upright, clad in russet hair. The native hunter with him gazed in mingled fear and amazement, dubbing them Agagwe, the little furry men whom one does not see once in a lifetime. Fast forward to 1938 when Cuthbert Burgoyne adds another layer to the mystery. His encounter along the coast of Portuguese Africa in 1927 brings us more questions according to Burgoyne while observing the shore with a glass of 12 magnifications he witnessed two little brown men walking among baboons. These creatures were certainly not any known monkey and were probably between four and five feet tall, quite upright, and graceful in figure. His account also mentions a friend and big game hunter who saw a family of similar creatures with the natives loudly forbidding him to shoot. In the late 1950s, Charles Corridor, a professional animal collector, reported the third sighting of Agagwe in Zaire. According to Corridor, the Agagwe got entangled in one of his bird snails, snares fell on its face, turned over, sat up, took the noose off its feet, and walked away before anyone could do anything. Now, let's talk about Bernard Huvelmans and his intriguing perspective on the Agagwe. He believed these creatures might be a relic humanoid, specifically a surviving gracile astrolopithecine. But what exactly are astrolopithecines and why the assumed link with Agagwe? Astrolopithecines were bipedal hominins that lived millions of years ago. They were smaller and more gracile than modern humans. Standing between three feet, 11 inches and four feet, seven inches covered in hair. Now imagine these creatures roaming East and South Africa during the Plyo Pleistocene area era. That's not easy to say. Humans theorized that the Agagwe could be a surviving species of Astropithecus. Their bipedalism combined with the need to adapt to dense forests might explain their elusive nature and small numbers. But here's where I'm still connecting the dots. What are your thoughts on this potential link between ancient hominins and mysterious Agagwe? Here's the kicker. Despite these compelling accounts and potential connections, we haven't had any recent Agagwe sightings. It makes me wonder, are they still out there lurking in the shadows? 
or has the mystery faded away? As I navigate through this cryptid journey, I'm genuinely excited to learn more, and that's where you come in. If you have stories, insights, or maybe even a different perspective on the Agagwe and its connection to astral epithecines, I'd love to hear it. Let's make this a space where we can all share and learn together. That wraps up our exploration into the Agagwe and its potential ties to astral epithecines. Join me next time as we continue our series, Venturing into the Unknown.